Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to bring you through my journey learning to program over the past six years. So for those of you that don't know, I started programming when I was 12 years old and I'm now 18, close to turning 19, and I'm a computer science major. So I consider almost everything I know because I'm self-taught and I go online and I look stuff up and I do research and all of that. And I'm just going to walk you through why I got into programming, how I got into it, and how I kind of reached the level that I'm at today. So as a kid, I was always one of those kids who did very well in school but had to put very minimal effort in. And I'm sure you guys know those kids or are those kids yourself. Now, this was great in elementary school because it meant I never had to do homework, I didn't have to study, I never had to worry about doing poorly on a test. But at the same time, I never felt challenged. And this led to me just being bored in class and just really, you know, not having much to do, to be honest. So, as a kid, what I would do is I was always interested in how things worked and why they worked. So one day, I think I went online and I just searched, how did a computer work? And watched through a few videos and kind of was like, wow, this is really interesting. And through researching this and looking this kind of stuff up, I eventually be, um, came to programming. Now, programming to me was something completely new. I'd never heard of it, my teachers never talked about it, my parents didn't do it. It was just completely new to me. So I started learning HTML and CSS. I think I went on some new Boston tutorial online. That was the first language that came up. So I was like, all right, let's learn this. Now, after doing it for probably an hour or two, I became immediately addicted. This was the first time for me that I felt slightly challenged. And it was just an amazing feeling for me because I was actually having to think and think logically and just do awesome things on my computer. So I started learning it almost every night. I would come home from school, watch one or two new Boston videos, program along on the side, try to tweak with some things, mess with them things, and I just absolutely loved it. So over the course of a year or two, I got really good at learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. And by the time I eventually reached that JavaScript level and I was doing some dynamic stuff with my HTML, I really loved JavaScript. And I was like, I'm not a creative person, I'm not very artistic, I don't really like the design aspect of web development, but this JavaScript stuff, the back end that you don't really see but does everything, that is what really interests me. So I started looking up stuff that was similar to JavaScript and figuring out more things I could do with it. Now back then JavaScript was not nearly as used as it was today. Um, I don't think they had Node.js or maybe they did all that stuff. Anyways, I didn't know about it so I didn't realize you could create like crazy stuff with JavaScript. So I actually ended up going and learning C Sharp. Now this was off a recommendation from one of my dad's coworkers or colleagues or friends or someone he knew. Uh, and he said, C Sharp, oh, that's a great language, you should learn that. Don't know if I completely agree with him on that one, but anyways, I started learning C Sharp. And this was my first real programming language. And this was where I just became immersed in different programming concepts and actually started developing computer science skills and getting good at real programming. Because in my opinion, HTML and CSS, it's a good starting point, but it doesn't teach you kind of that logical foundation that you need to be, well, a programmer. So I started looking at C Sharp. Um, I did this again every night after school. It was something I was super addicted to and I would create these little applications. Um, I remember creating some applications that would solve like my equations in math, just doing some really interesting stuff. And I think I got to the point where I was at like objects and classes in C Sharp. So I understood kind of functions and some of that different stuff, uh, but I was not really at an advanced level. And keep in mind, this is when I'm like 14 years old. So now I'm going into grade nine and I figure out that there's this programming class or course or after school thing at my school. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna join that and see what it's like. So I go to a few meetings and I quickly realize that what this is, is it's actually a competition for the University of Waterloo um, programming competition. It's called Canadian Computing Competition and it's a set of questions uh, and you get graded based on how many things you get right. So I ask the guy who's running it, I'm like, so what language can I write this in? Can I write it in C Sharp? Because that was the one that I knew really well um, and that I had been programming in for like the past year. And he's like, no, unfortunately, they don't support the .NET languages. Uh, but if you want to learn one and you want to do this, you should learn Python. And this is what started my Python career and almost kind of this YouTube channel as well. So picking up Python, um, any of you that have gone from like a language like Java or C Sharp to Python know that Python has so many amazing things that would take you like 10 or 20 lines to do in C Sharp, like functions that just do it for you. So I immediately fell in love with Python and I started learning it and learning it. But by the time that competition came, I didn't feel confident enough to do it. 
looking back, I probably should have just done it and just see how well I did, but I didn't know Python that well. I still had to look up some of the syntax, and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to do the competition. So I skipped out on the competition, but I continued to learn Python and use Python on a daily basis, as well as kind of doing a bit of C Sharp as, uh, in the back. So then grade 10 comes along, and I enroll in an actual programming course in high school. Now this course taught ActionScript. Now, ActionScript, I don't know if any of you guys know it, it's the language used with Flash, so you can actually do like animations, you draw the animations and create objects and then you can move them with ActionScript. No one uses ActionScript, completely useless language, but that's what we were learning programming in. So this was super simple for me, um, I completed every assignment in like half an hour, because I already had the fundamentals of programming down. I knew variables, I knew loops, I knew how all this stuff worked, so I was way ahead in the class. So what I ended up doing in that class was just working more on Python and working more on my own stuff. Now, after ActionScript uh, and after completing that course, I'd still been doing Python consistently after school and learning it and learning it and getting better. And this is when I started my YouTube channel. I was like, okay, you know, I see these people on YouTube, like the New Boston and Sentex and all these amazing guys that I look up to and some of them that I even get to talk to today. And I'm like, this is awesome. I want to do something similar to this. So I started teaching Python the very basics on my YouTube channel. This was completely no schedule. I had no plans to actually do this full time. It was just like, you know what? I'm going to do some videos on Python and maybe it'll help out a few people. Um, I like teaching this. It's kind of cool. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I start doing these videos on YouTube with Python, not really going anywhere, not really doing anything. I forget about the YouTube channel. I just keep working on Python and getting better and better and better and learning and making different projects and programs and all of that stuff. Now grade 11 comes, comes along and now we're in a real programming course and this is using Python. So you guys can imagine that what ended up happening here was I knew everything that we were learning in this course. So same thing as the last uh, course with ActionScript. Everything was just super simple, super easy. And what ended up happening was I would sit beside some of my friends in that class and I would actually start teaching them Python. Because the teacher that we had, he was doing as good of a job as he could have, but for a lot of the kids, they were having trouble understanding the concepts. And since I already, I already knew it and I was one of their peers, they were not hesitant to come up and ask me questions. So as I started doing this, I would finish my assignment in like 10, 15 minutes and then help out my friends and teach them Python and programming. They started saying to me like, hey man, like you're doing a really good job teaching me. Like what he just said makes no sense, but you just made it super clear and now I understand it. And I never had any kind of intention of being a teacher or doing any of this stuff, but apparently the way that I explained things and was, I don't know, teaching people stuff worked really well. So this is what I started doing more and more of. And people would just know if they need anything in class, you go to Tim, you ask him, he'll help you out. So I figured, you know what? I had done these few videos on YouTube. I was getting a few positive comments on them. I had like maybe 100 subscribers or something like that. So I started doing some more. And I was like, if people in my class can benefit from my teaching, then maybe people online can as well. So I kept doing it, kept doing it. And I took a few breaks, I wasn't really going anywhere, and then I got back, and it just was like on and off YouTube, until eventually I created this one video that did really well, and this was my Pi Game programming series. So I did this Pi Game series, um, I didn't even do the rest of the videos, I just did the first video, and you guys have probably seen this video, that might even be why you're subscribed to my channel, and as I kept doing these Pi Game videos, I was getting more and more subscribers, and I was getting all these positive comments, and people practically begging me to keep teaching them online. So I was like, you know what, maybe this is something I wanted to do. And I did more and more videos like once a week and just continually kept doing more and more and getting better and better. And here we are today. So anyways, that's kind of my programming journey. I skipped over a bunch of different parts, but this is something that to me is super interesting and that I think a lot of you guys maybe can relate to in the way that you learn programming and be challenged and all of that. So to quickly summarize kind of everything and just my last thoughts on this. Today, I absolutely love programming, as you guys can't tell. Uh, I'm learning something new almost every night, and then I'm teaching it as well on YouTube. And this is a great way for me to not only give back to you guys and help you know, teach you and other kids that were once in my footsteps learn programming and learn the fundamentals from what I consider a good teacher and a good foundation, but also to reinforce my skills in those. So what I do usually when I do a YouTube video is I start the day or two before, I learn the concept, I practice it, I apply it, and then I teach it on YouTube to make sure I actually know what I'm talking about. And it's really easy to tell when I don't because I'll start teaching and I'll realize, hey, you know what, you have no idea what you're talking about. Go back, relearn, 
try again. So anyways, this is something that I'm really passionate about now, and looking back at this, I just want to help out the kids that were like me, that weren't challenged, that if they were introduced to programming, have an ability to be to do something amazing and to just, you know, challenge themselves. So that's why I'm so passionate about this, and I put out these videos. I try almost every day to help out programmers, mostly in that beginner area, get a strong foundation and just keep learning and doing better every day. I also teach programming at a summer camp, so I work at a summer camp that's really close to my house, and a while ago they started this coding specialty, so I actually teach Python programming to kids that are between 11 and 14 years old, and I can tell you it's a super rewarding feeling being able to see kids that never would have been introduced to programming or never would have seen this kind of computers or whatnot, just absolutely excelling and loving what they're doing. So with that being said, I'm sorry if this video was a little bit rambly or it went on some different tangents or whatnot. But I hope that you guys can get some value from this story and I'd love to hear your stories as well. How you guys got into programming, if you can relate in any way. And yeah, I'd just love to hear that in the comments down below. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another Python programming tutorial.